and welcome to the second part of aneurysm. In the first part, we have seen into the definition, classification, and even the pathogenesis of how the aneurysm develops. Now we'll look into the individual types of aneurysm. The first one is the atherosclerotic aneurysm, where the pathogenesis lies behind the development of an atherosclerotic plaque and the site of atherosclerotic plaque develops into an aneurysm. This one is the most common type of aneurysm found and it's commonly seen in males over the age of 50 years. The most common site is the abdominal aorta, thoracic aorta, the iliac arteries and other large systemic arteries where the pathogenesis can be defined by the development of atherosclerosis leading to inflammatory infiltrates which releases metalloprotease and leads into degradation of extracellular matrix. This extracellular matrix forms the collagen fiber or the supporting structure for the vascular vessel wall. And the degradation would lead into a weakened spot and development of aneurysm. This is how it looks like. This is an abdominal aorta. This is an arteriograph of an abdominal aorta where you can see the bulging. It can be quite easily seen. Both the kidneys are also visible in this. This picture shows the rupturing of the aneurysm. In the first pic, that is termed as E, which gives you a large aortic aneurysm that got ruptured, whereas the B shows an open view in the location of the ruptured tract. Now, regarding the complications that are created by atherosclerotic aneurysm, it can be classified in three parts that is, rupture, compression, and arterial occlusion. Rupture, that is the aneurysm as it expands and gets bigger. It leads into the rupture as expansion would lead into weakening of more weakening of the vessel wall and eventually it will rupture. It is one of the most serious and fatal complication. The rupturing of vessel wall will depend on the size and duration of the aneurysm and the blood pressure to which it was exposed. Usually, the rupture of abdominal aneurysm will occur in the peritoneum or in the retroperitoneum, resulting in sudden and massive bleeding. Usually, there is slow leakage and often this ruptured aneurysm may get infected. Compression, uh, what is the complication of compression? The atherosclerotic aneurysm may press upon some adjacent structures such as uh, the ureter and vertebral bodies and due to which we can find associated symptoms of this compressed part. That is, it might lead into difficulty in urination or it might lead to some neuro neurological changes due to compression of the vertebral bodies. Atherosclerotic aneurysm of abdomen may also occlude the inferior mesenteric artery and this may lead to development of occlusive thrombosis. Collateral circulation develops slowly and is nearly always sufficient so as not to produce the effect of ischemia. So uh, although there may be occlusion but uh, there is always a scope uh, compensation through the development of collateral circulation. Thromboembolism is rather common in abdominal aneurysm. The next type is the syphilitic aneurysm, where the causative organism trypanoma pallidum infects the vasa vasorum of the ascending aorta and the transverse portion of the aortic arch. The tertiary symptoms of the tertiary infestation of syphilis causes vasculitis of the aorta. This vasculitis or the inflammatory condition of 
adventitia, including the blood vessels that supply the aorta itself. So what it will cause is the end arterial arteritis obliterating. So obliterating end arteritis, and what it will cause is that would be narrowing of the lumina, lumina, scarring of the vessel wall and dense surrounding rim of lymphocytes and plasma cell that may extend into the milieu. The aorta loses its elastic recoil with destruction of media and becomes dilated producing an aneurysm. Valvular insufficiency and massive volume overload leads to hypertrophy of left ventricle and this leads into enlargement of the heart. And it's uh, sometimes known as the core bovinum, which is cow's heart. Size of the heart of the cow is quite massive. It's uh, analogically called core bovinum. Its pathogenesis, syphilitic aneurysm, will lead into intense inflammation of adventitia and vasa vasura aortic arch, which in turn might lead to two destinations that is vessel ischemia of medial tissue or it will include the lumen of the vessel. If there is a vessel ischemia, it leads into weakness and dilatation of aorta, an aortic valve hole, whereas occlusion may reduce the blood flow to the aorta. In both the cases, it might create complications. How does in the aneurysm of separatic origin looks like? It actually looks like the teeth pre part appearance and analogy here is also used. The involved areas of the aorta show irregular internal wrinkling and this wrinkling leads into the T-part appearance. Now the complication, I think we have three complications here, the rupture, compression and cardiac dysfunction. The rupture uh, causes massive and fetal hemorrhage in the pleural cavity, pericardial sac, trachea and esophagus, sensitivifies obviously the choice of vessel here. Compression may lead compression on trachea, esophagus, uh, if it's on trachea it may cause dyspnea, you know, if it's on esophagus it will cause dysphagia. On recurrent laryngeal nerve leading to hoarseness of voice, erosion of vertebra, sternum and ribs due to persistent pressure may also be seen. Also symptoms associated with cardiac dysfunction are also seen when the aortic root and the valve are involved. Syphilitic aneurysm produces aortic incompetence and cardiac failure. So uh, the regurgitation part gets involved in this, that is the aortic regurgitation. Narrowing of coronary ostia, ostia may further aggravate cardiac disease. Now the third type is a secular aneurysm of cerebral arteries that is of the circle of the list. So you can see uh, different um, aneurytic lesions. They are marked with the blue arrow. So it's known as Berry's aneurysm of cerebral arteries. As the hemodynamic stress increases due to hypertension, atherosclerosis may develop. This atherosclerosis will lead into coaptation of aorta, which increases the blood in the internal carotid artery, which again will increase the blood in the circle of pulis. And this increased blood increases the pressure in the circle of pulis, leading into the berries aneurysm. The most common site is the junction of communicating branches with the interior cerebral artery. And regarding its pathogenesis, as you can see in this diagram, communicating arteries would be the obvious site for development. The pathogenesis at the junction of communicating branches with the main cerebral vessel. The vessel normally lacks internal elastic lamina and smooth muscles. So this junction becomes a site as uh, it's lacking the basic connective tissue support 
and this lacking of the connective tissue support makes there a soft spot where aneurysm can develop. The next type is a mycotic aneurysm. This type of aneurysm is secondary to the weakening of vessel wall due to an infection. It can be either bacteria or fungal. The most common pathogen involved is Staphylococcus aureus. Although other like Staphylococcus epidermis, Salmonella, Streptococcus pneumoniae may also be involved. Even fungal infections with fungal pathogens like Candida, Cryptococcus aspergillus are also involved. But these are not the obvious causes, but we cannot rule it out because in certain patients who are suffering from immunodeficiency like HIV or having a therapy given for immunosuppression, even cases with diabetes mellitus do show infection with these pathogens. These can further lead into development of aneurysm. So this is a typical picture of a mycotic aneurysm developed at the femoral artery which is the most common site for development of mycotic aneurysm. The second most common site is abdominal aorta, intracranial arteries, coronary arteries, uh, most common visceral artery to be involved is the coronary artery. This type of aneurysm is secondary to the weakening of the wall. The next type is the dissecting aneurysm of aorta. So uh, there is aortic dissection. So how do we define it? There is uh, obviously we have seen the dissecting type of aneurysm in the classification where we saw a false uh, aneurysm getting developed due to separation of the layers of the wall. So it refers to dissecting hematoma in which blood enters the separated wall of the vessel and sp spreads by varying distance longitudinally. The blood oozes out into that chamber, which creates a pulsating type of aneurysm presence. The most common site is the aorta and is an acute catastrophic aortic disease. It causes a lot of uh, other complications as the aorta gets involved in it. This condition occurs mostly in men in between the age range of 50 to 70 years. In women, uh, it may develop, but um, may occur during the pregnancy where there are alterations in the blood pressure. So, um, if you see this diagram closely, uh, so we want, we see a dissected aortic wall. There's a split. So, you can see the central lumen, which is quite clear. You can see this is the central lumen, which is quite clear. Uh, yeah, but here, this one and this one shows the split into which the blood running through the central lumen will slip into these spaces as the intima and the media layer have separated. So there are two lumens which are created, the central lumen and the peripheral lumen. Now, what is the cause of such type of aortic dissection? Hypertension is the obvious cause in 90% of the cases. Also, Marfan syndrome, which is a defect in the development of connective tissue. Development of cystic medial necrosis of hatin, especially in old age. Heterogenic trauma during cardiac catheterization and coronary bypass surgery may also have a complication later on and pregnancy for some unknown reasons. Also, we do have a classification for dissecting aneurysm of aorta, aortic dissection. So, we have three types, type 1, type 2 and type 3. So, uh, even the classification uh, is done here in two pages, that is D. Becky and Stanford. For DKVK, it has three types, which is type 1, type 2, type 3. And as we can see, the type 1 originates in the ascending aorta, 
repugnates to at least to the aortic arch and often beyond it distally. Whereas type 2 will origin in and confine to the, it's confined only to the ascending aorta. Whereas the type 3 originates in the descending aorta and extends distally down to the aorta and rarely, rarely retrogates, that is towards the ascending aorta. So here they have marked it, that is uh, the types of uh, area involved in it. So in the first two cases, we only have involvement on the ascending aorta. And in type 1, it descends down distally to the aortic arch. Whereas in type 2, it remains confined only till the ascending aorta. Type 3, we don't have the origin into the ascending aorta. It rarely goes back to the ascending aorta. Whereas the Stanford type divides them into type A and B. There, see this. If there is involvement of ascending aorta, regardless of the site of origin, and all section not involving the ascending aorta, so we can write about these two classifications or types: is Debecki and Stanford classification. Now about the histological manifestation, there is focal separation. As why histologically it is important because as we have seen. Uh, the, the three layers out of which the intima layer will get separated from the medial layer. So we find separation of fibromuscular and elastic tissue in the media. Also numerous cystic spaces in the media containing basophilic ground substance. Fragmentation of elastic tissue and this is the main reason that is uh, the supporting connective tissue gets the disintegrated. And that leads into separation of the vessel uh, or the layers of the vessel. And also we find, find increased fibrosis of the media. Now regarding the complications, we have three complications again, rupturing, cardiac disease and ischemia. Hemorrhage from rupture results in mortality in 90% of the cases. And hemorrhage occurs in the pericardium less frequently it may rupture into the thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity or the retroperitoneum. Aortic valve may be involved leading to aortic incompetency and further it will lead to heart failure. Obstruction of coronary artery results in ischemia causing fatal myocardial infarction and rarely dissecting aneurysm may extend into the cardiac chamber. So if that extends, it will involve the heart also, separating the endocardium with other layers. It may also cause ischemia, as in complication, where obstruction of the branches of aorta by the dissecting dissection results in ischemia of the tissue supply. As the lumen, the central lumen gets narrower, it will carry less amount of blood, and that may cause ischemia. There may be renal infraction, cerebral ischemia, and infraction of spinal cord as the amount of blood reaching to these parts of body reduces. And to summarize, uh, an aneurysm is a permanent abnormal dilatation of blood vessels which cannot be reversed. It can be congenital or acquired or due to weakening or destruction of vessel wall. Based on pathogenetic mechanism, aneurysm has an atherosclerotic, septic, dissecting, mycotic, and berries aneurysm. The last one are seen in the circular fullness in the base of the brain, that is the berries aneurysm, where you will see the, it was connecting to the main artery, but the junction where, from where it connects do lack elastic tissues. Septic, Atherosclerotic aneurysm are the most common type affecting the abdominal aorta more often and may rupture to cause compression on adjacent tissue. Cephalitic aneurysm occur due to cephalitic aortitis and affects ascending and arch of aorta. Descending hematoma is often preceded by hypertension and affects the arch and ascending aorta. And we have seen into the classification of how dissecting aneurysm may be classified involvement of the ascending aorta or non-involvement of the ascending aorta. 
So to summarize, this is an irreversible change and a progressive change, if not checked on the right time. Thank you. That was all about aneurysm.